Hey guys, so I've been driving this 2020 Infiniti QX50 now for a week because the car that I just bought is already in the shop. More on that later. So what do I think about this thing? Let's find out. Low fuel, great. Gotta tell you, being in Arizona, it'd be really nice if this thing had heated seats. Doesn't have heated seats. Does have reverse camera. It is a step up from what we have. It's a step up from what I have right there on my 2007 and even what I have on my 2009 because they essentially are using the same form factor anyway. But boy, it's hot in here. Low fuel, I gotta get gas, this sucks. Here we go. Some of the big notable changes from some of the older ones, even the 2020 QX60 that I drove. We have an entire new infotainment. This is fantastic compared to what they had. You have the passenger has air controls, driver has air controls. It's a little weird. It's all spread out usually you control those right here you have the radio you have media but then you also have this which you see a lot in audi a4 audi q5 and then you have an upgraded shifter it looks completely different it looks a lot like the honda ridgeline that i did a few episodes ago everything is completely different than even the like i said the 2020. it's funny because all this stuff is still incredibly basic but it looks better and then you have this screen up here and it's a little confusing as to what we're doing here. It feels like everything you do down here, you could also do up here. This thing is so different. When you get out of here, here we go. You have to look down at it to do whatever you want to do and kind of, it kind of distracts you. And then it's the same deal with this cool little dial. You still have to turn it. You still have to look down at it in order for you to figure out what you want to do. You know, sometimes less is more right less is more because you also have a lot of the controls over here on the steering wheel but these are they've always had these controls on the left whether it's phone voice command volume up volume down switch to the channels all the normal stuff cruise control on the right so all that is at least standard is all that's familiar the interior of this thing is beautiful they really set their game up infinity huge props to you for stepping up your interior Let's walk around and look at this thing. The seats up front are beautiful, very comfortable. The seats in the back are also very comfortable. It's roomier than it looks, although it's still within a few inches the same size as the previous gen, like the QX70, the FX50, 35, 37, etc. But it's actually larger. The storage space in here is actually a little bit larger by cubic feet. this thing in sport mode it's kind of sluggish well here's so I, this is my second day with this vehicle and it's kind of weird because sometimes when you put it into sport mode sometimes when you just get on it it re it responds really well sometimes it doesn't respond at all it sounds like the the transmission is dragging so then you have to do the manual you have to do the paddles I have found that it's fine just to put it in standard mode. Standard mode, I mean, let's face it, it's a 2.0 liter turbo. It's actually kind of peppy. I know a lot of people are like, well, it's not the V6, it's not the V8. Not a lot of people have the V8, which by the way, not a lot of people have it. I really like the two-tone interior. I love the silver. It's kind of, it's a textured silver trim. This is the luxe edition. This isn't just the basic pure. This is the Lux all-wheel drive. And you can tell because of a few of the things that it comes with, a few things on the exterior. It's got the body colored door handles with the chrome accent. On the interior, it's got the textured silver trim. It's got the moon roof, or the, it's got the full panoramic roof front to back. 
I need gas. But see, I have to keep looking down to figure out what it is I wanna do. I don't like that. Power outlets, USB-C in the front, standard USB. I think they both trigger CarPlay. In the armrest, there's also another USB port with a little charging icon, so it, maybe it's just for charging and it doesn't actually connect to CarPlay or Android Auto if that's what you're into. It would be really nice up here at the top if it had some sort of a screensaver or just something other than what it is. Again, it's a huge, huge improvement over what they've had in the past. But for that big wasted space, I need, I need to see more going on. I need to see like a cool little infinity symbol, you know, maybe an analog clock display, something other than this big blank screen because when I have Apple CarPlay pulled up, you have it. But without CarPlay, going through these modes, there's nothing. It's like information, connection, driver assistance. You think it would have built-in drive mode selector. Oh God, here it is. Engine transmission standard, steering standard, active trace control on, active engine brake on. Let's see. So let's go to sport for the transmission and let's go sport for the steering. I don't know what the rest of this means, but you think you'd see navigation, right? You have this big screen and you don't have any integrated navigation. I'm sure it's on some other package, but why not just throw it on here? You're trying to compete against the Audi Q5. You're trying to compete against the Acura RDX. Why not? Here's the deal, and I know I complain a lot about reverse cameras, qualities, and whatnot. But if you're gonna upgrade everything else, make the car look like a million bucks, and then skimp on the quality of the cameras you're using outside, because it's not the screen, the screen you can tell has a perfectly fine resolution. It's the quality of the camera they're using outside the vehicle. In this case, just the rear view camera. It's okay to upgrade every once in a while. It's weird because this thing takes off and it doesn't really <laughs> it doesn't really feel like anything. But you're moving. You're actually moving quicker than you think. Well, and because it's a turbo 2.0 or a turbo two cylinder, if that's you know technically. So I don't really understand a lot of the the complaining about it. It's that CVT, which a lot of people hate transmission, which I understand, and it's. Like I said, it, it's driven very inconsistently the last couple of days, but when it's good, it's good. So when we take off from this light, I'm gonna manually do this stuff myself. Oh, that sucks. It just sounds like it's dragging. It sounds like it's dragging. It's not making a lot of noise. It's kind of good it's not, making a lot, it's not making a lot of noise because that way the police can't look around and get you for excessive use of, what is it, excessive use of power, excessive use of, I don't know. But I'm gonna switch it back because this thing sounds like it's gonna fall apart on me. Let's get out of personal mode. Let's get out of the regular sport. Let's go back into standard mode. Really like the vents. What I don't like is how far everything is. So for me to, yeah, and first off, of course, I can move my seat up, that's not the point. Can you move your seat up? No. But I have to reach way up here to touch this screen. They're almost, they should all, almost just have this. They should have this and dedicate this to the camera system and whatever graphics. And there's just nothing to look at. The radio's on, there's not, there's not much going on. Look at that old man. I just beat that old man in a sprint. And I am proud of myself for it. He has no idea in that F-150, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, I dropped back into standard mode. I shouldn't have dropped back into standard mode. Would I take it on a road trip? Yeah. You know, would I buy the vehicle? Probably not, but it's not terrible. The body lines are a little confusing. It looks like, so you look at the front of this thing. The front of this vehicle looks like it could be, from the side profile, looks like it could be the natural successor to like the QX70 in the FX series. The back kind of swoops in and gets like really small and it looks kind of like 
the QX60, which looks nothing like the QX70. And the wheelbase is actually shorter, which is why. So it doesn't have those flaring hips that the Infiniti FX are known for having. And that's too bad. It's that really aggressive, I think, they called it the electric cheetah. Electric cheetah, bi bionic cheetah? I don't even know, but that's a nickname that the Infinities would get, the bionic cheetah. This is not a bionic cheetah. This might be a bionic bobcat. The, the, the lighting is, is really nice looking. Something's going on here with the hood. I'm not quite sure why the hood looks like that. I've never seen a hood that kind of, and I haven't seen a lot of cars, but I have never seen a hood, a modern hood, that goes beyond the lines of the front fenders. It just seems weird. And it seems like there's a bigger gap on one side than the other. I doubt it. I don't know the history of this vehicle. It's a loaner vehicle. It's a loaner vehicle with 3,868 miles, which means people are putting a lot of seat time in this. I'm probably gonna have this for several days. And you know what? Another vehicle that just blew past me, the GLC 300 Coupe. That's another vehicle in this class that I've driven before. I drove it last year as a rental. And man, that is a nice vehicle. It's a lot quicker. It's loaded with more technology. And it's supposed to be a competitor, so I'm not quite sure what Infiniti was thinking with this thing. In fact, there goes a Toyota RAV4. I think it's a RAV4. This is more along the lines of a RAV4, but nicer than it is then it should be getting mentioned with a Q5, an RDX, a Mercedes, whatever the case. Visually, yes. Performance, miscellaneous things, not really. Like right now on my heads up display, I'm staring at the tire pressure. I'm staring at the tire pressure all day. And sure, I could change that somewhere with one of these 700 buttons. I don't know which button to push. By the time I figure it out, my other vehicle is gonna be done and I'm just gonna take it back. There are some things that I really do like about it besides the interior. It's, it's new, I love new. Major props to Infinity for finally upgrading the interior, the infotainment center, the hardware, software, what is going on here with this? This car, this car is going, look at this guy, look at this guy. Anyway, props to Infinity for doing that because it was long overdue. Some things I don't understand. It's hot here in Arizona. My 2009 Infiniti has cooled seats. This thing does not. It has heated seats, but I, I would figure everything would have cooled seats. What is this thing next to me? This is a BMW X1. It looks a little smaller than this. Maybe that's a viable competitor. But yeah, this thing should have cooled seats. It's a crime that it doesn't. In fact, I had to shut this earlier because it was getting so hot in here. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Let's open it up. I'm still going. Wait, what just happened? Oh, whoa, no, 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 no. I don't want that. Look at this, infinity intuition. What does that mean? User profile, sync with intelligent key, welcome message. Welcome, welcome message. This tire pressure is killing me. 46, 45, 38, 44, and in the middle it says 33, 33, which the front should be 33 and the rear should be 33. Only if he's five, three. Tire pressure should be, just look in the door. Usually you open the door and there's a little sticker there and it tells you what the pressure should be. Obviously your manual too, but no one wants to file through that thing. Kind of disappointed this thing does not have a charging pad. But it is a 2020 model, it's not a 2021. Now there's a 2021 QX55. I doubt that I'll get an opportunity to check it out. But if I do, you guys will be the first to know. And then maybe that has a charging pad. Maybe that has cooled seats. Maybe that has done something with this display. I'm digging the transflective screen though. You guys know what that means? That means when the sun hits it, you can still see it. Now it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than most aftermarket systems where you can't see anything if you're driving and the sun is to your back. Of course, close this thing and we no longer have that problem. This is who we're racing. He doesn't know it though.
Wow. That was uninspiring. Got up to about 75. Blew everybody away. Because they didn't know we were racing. Honestly, driving this thing around, it sounds like it's always on the verge of the transmission just slipping. Listen to this. That was awesome, right? <laughs> no, there's much there's not much to it, but it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. I know it sounds like I don't like this vehicle. It looks good. So here's a little update. I've had this vehicle for 12 days. I am on my way back right now to take it to the dealership. And I have to say, I have some of the things that drove me crazy about the vehicle. One of the biggest things was the CVT transmission. I mean, it's not the same V6 or V8 that I had and it's, it's buggy. But I guess it learns the driver. I guess what they say, the, the transmission learns the driver. And I have to say, I haven't touched any of the controls in the last week and a half, or the last week. And it drives as I would expect it to. The light turns green, I take off, it goes. I'm merging lanes. Um, it's very capable. Sure, you don't really feel the power, but you can tell when you're flying past people in traffic when you're getting off a stoplight. And is it is it for me? No, I would still rather have my other vehicles, but man, it's, it's not as bad as people say. And I think what happens with car reviews is you don't really have the vehicle that long. And this is a classic case, right? You don't have the vehicle long enough to really experience the vehicle when it has kind of a goofy transmission. And I would say that the CVT transmission in this Infinity drives completely different than I originally experienced. I guess one thing I can also say is, I mean, I understand, I understand how people love this vehicle. And at the same time, I understand why someone wouldn't. If you're transitioning over to, you know, a traditional transmission style, like the V6 or the V8, then it's a, it's a, it's a completely different animal and it takes a few days to really appreciate how the vehicle works. Now. It's still a colossal use of space when it comes to the infotainment center and upon research with this being the Lux trim, it's not even an option, which it should be an option, but the next level up trim has the navigation. And I've seen a YouTube video where they were using the navigation and it was great from the turn dial down here to the screen, the, the, the interface on the screen. It was great. Now, I don't know why it's not standard in an Infinity. It's supposed to be a, an upscale version. It should be standard. And so that's something that Infinity is gonna have to figure out. And then possibly in the future, it will be standard because it should be standard. Because there's old cars you can buy that have navigation. Hell, the 2009 that I'm on my way to pick it up right now has navigation in it. It sucks, it's antiquated but at least it has it. So there should be no excuse in 2020, which is when this vehicle, this model was made to not have navigation. It's just a standard feature of the vehicle. Well, everyone, I gotta tell you, I love, I love some of these body lines. I love the interior of this thing, but it's not my FX. It's not my 2009 FX50S. It's not even my 2007 FX35 Sport. So tell me in the comments below, what do you like better? Do you like the, the styling of the first FX, the second gen FX? Do you like the QX? Do you like the modern QX, this style? This is a 2020, but the 2021s look almost the same. Also, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the bell icon. Don't forget to subscribe to me on Hard Parking Podcast, the non-automotive automotive podcast. That's a wrap.